I swear eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. Helmet. And where the hell are you? You should be at home crying your eyes out because I'm not with you. So listen, you wanted something big? Oh, well, sweetheart, have I got news for you. <laughs> Guess you're finally going to have to take me off the dog show in Bridge Club Circuit. So you might start getting my new office ready. I've always been partial to the one next to yours. Seriously, love. You wanted tulips on the Rhine? I found the big blooms. The tree is in harmony with its roots. Ah, 
Under the empathy of the master's hand, the tree has found its natural shape. Because the tree is served well, the tree continues to serve its master. As you have brought good health and peace to your bonsai, may your bonsai continue to bring happiness to your spirit. Thank you, Mr. Okihiro. And may your uh, voyage be tranquil a thousand years. You flew them all the way from Japan. And all they did was look at your bonsai and wish you happiness. Very expensive tree doctors, I'd say. I didn't bring them to Paris to perform tree surgery, Bennett. I made a deal with Mr. Okihiro to design a string of miniature golf courses in Tokyo. Now, this is an outrage. It's not here. What are you looking uh, for, uh, Father? A photo essay on uh, extraordinary tulips by Helmut Vogler. Now, where is the last issue? Here. Now, look, you see what I mean? There it is. Huh? Next issue, Tulips on the Rhine. I want to know who's responsible for this. Suzanne, get me the... Uh... The editor? Don't we have another picture of her? One with more cleavage? You know, more sex. Yeah, we do. Don't let's forget who our readers are, Jake. There's an Alexander Abington on the phone, Mrs. Sidberg. Should I tell him to call back? Who? Alexander Abington. Are you sure it's not Addington? Could be. He says it's urgent. I'll take it. I'll put it through. Mr. Addington? This is Lorraine Sidberg. Yes, I know. I'm calling about Helmut Fergler. He's been in touch with you? No, of course not. Why the hell should he be in touch with me? I mean, you're the editor. It's your responsibility to make sure your writers deliver what they promise when you promise it. Excuse me, Mr. Addington. May I ask what this is in reference to? Tulips! You've run two parts of his three-part series on tulips. Where is the third part? I I'm afraid I had to make room for another editorial feature. That is absolutely ridiculous. Will you send me over Helmut's article now, immediately? I'm afraid I don't have that article, sir. Well, call up Helmut and get it. I'll try to find him. He hasn't kept in touch. What? Has he quit? Did you fire him? No, no. He's still under contract to us. Don't worry, sir. You'll see that third article very soon. Yes, I'm sure I will. Denise, get me connections to Rotterdam and make it fast. Tell me, Your Highness. Sergei. I never know how to address royalty. Chateau Lafitte, 1959. I recommend the Queen. Excellent. My dear, this might sound terribly impulsive. But trust me, I'm not an impulsive man. I want to ask you to... Pardon, monsieur. Brock! How can you do it? Excuse me, my dear. You could have paged me. I did. Sent a note to the table. I did. Waved to me from across the room. I tried. I could have been a princess. <laughs> Nikki, he bought his title on the 23rd of August, 1989, at Sotheby's for 250,000. Dollars? 
scruples. So they... Where are we going? Rotterdam. Mm. Maybe yes. for a deadline, but there's a little more to it than that. Well, I'm all ears, boss. Hamlet Burglar is an ambitious young writer whose zest for horticulture is only exceeded by his rabid, radical convictions. Could it be a bit of a muckraker? He was fired from his last job for finding out too much about some of the advertisers. So you obviously think that Burglar was digging up more than tulips? I don't know, but his editor, Ms. Sidberg, thought it important enough to fly out there immediately. No editor flies 8,000 miles just to pick up a story. Right, but you're going to send us. You're already on your way. The last place Vogler stayed was the Hotel Van Meer. He hasn't been seen in four days, but he hasn't checked out either. I'll send JJ the information I have. Link out. Well, a couple of days in the Netherlands. Why not? You know, when these guys go AWOL, why can't they go to Tahiti? Why? I mean, you know, someplace interesting. For your information, Luke, Rotterdam is the home of the Garden of Earthly Delights. Oh, yeah? Maybe I should have brought my dancing shoes. That's not a nightclub, Luke. It's a painting by Hieronymus Bosch. Harmonious Bosch? No, I know who that is. That's the guy who paints his bad dreams. No, I can relate. I've had a lot of bad dreams. You're okay, you too. Let's get back to business. I needed to check out Fergler's Hotel. And I'm going to embark upon a slightly more dangerous mission. What are you going to do? I'm going to infiltrate the notorious flower gangs of Rotterdam. <laughs> Professor Marhoff? Yes? Thank you so much for taking the time to see me. What can I do for you, Mr. Barclay? Mr. Barclay. Well, I'm writing a series of articles on tulips. <laughs> it's amazing. You only have to mention the word tulip anywhere in Holland. The only response is my own. That's very flattering. It's always gratifying to have one's work appreciated. I must say, this is all very impressive. The way over my head. It's just chemistry. Hmm. Chemistry and tulips, an interesting combination. For me, Chemistry is an exercise for the brain, and flowers are for the heart. Fascinating. You know, coincidentally, a friend of mine was doing a series of articles for International Focus magazine. You may have met him. His name was Fergler. Helmut Fergler. I was supposed to meet him in Amsterdam. Fergler? Yes. He made an appointment to see me last Thursday, I believe. But he never came. <laughs> That sounds like Helmut. Before he met up with some young lady and decided on her and Paris against both of us. But the brain and the heart. It's beginning to sound like an article that my editor would give her IT for if he had the time. That's a thing I'm very short of. 
Oh, well, never mind. But while I'm here, perhaps I could see some of your famous tulips. I'm afraid not, Mr. Barclay. I had a very bad year. All my tulips died. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible. I have an appointment right now. Oh, yes, thank you. And if uh, Helmut should happen to get in touch, you think you could ask him to give me a call? I'm staying at the Hotel Van Meer. Naturally. Thank you. Goodbye. You're sure this is Helmut's room? Yes, 312. Getting them is one thing. Knowing how to use them is another. <clears throat> so, uh, what are we looking for anyway? Bulbs? Seeds? Pollen? When did you last hear from him? I'm not telling you anything till you tell me who you are. We're friends of Helmut's. This was mailed to you six days ago, from Helmut Vergler. Well, that's strange. It's just one slide. No letter, no story. Look, he was doing a story on tulips. That, that's all I know. You want to have a this? Look, what's going on? I know Vogler well enough to know he doesn't have any friends like you. I think that's a compliment. Thank you. Well, the least you can do is tell Don't me. Don't worry. Look, as soon as we find out, you'll get an exclusive. We're going to stay in touch with you. She obviously knows more than she's letting on. I need to keep an eye on her. In the meantime, I'm going to find a tape recorder. I swore if I didn't see you take that. That's the point. <laughs> I don't know what he knows. He just said he was a friend of the reporter. Barkley, huh? Don't worry about him. I'll take care of everything. Like you took care of Vogler. I don't like this, Kurtz. Look, man. In 72 hours, our friends in the oil cartel will have transferred the money to the Swiss accounts. At that time, you can tell them anything you like. However, if you care about your health, I should strongly advise you to shut up. We have a visitor, Helmut's editor. Miss Sidberg? Mm hmm What do you think she knows? Probably not much more than we do, otherwise she wouldn't be searching his room. She was kind enough to loan us some research materials. How about Professor Meyerhoff? Well, he says he never met with Helmut. But you know, I'm not so sure. Those cop instincts again? He seemed very shaken. Do you think Meyerhoff killed Helmut? Do I think Helmut's dead? Yes. I think that Meyerhoff killed him. No, I don't. But I think he's involved in something, and whatever it is has gone horribly wrong. It definitely has something to do with tulips. Your instincts? Mm. My research materials. Mm. Helmut sent these to Lorraine. I guess the story was supposed to follow. Now you know this is very interesting. Because Meyerhoff said all his tulips died. It's Luke. Now what? Wow. Hey, without a smoking gun in your hand, huh? Listen, I uh, felt really bad about how rough I was with you, so. Apology accepted. 
Now, if you'll excuse me. Excuse me, but uh, you've got an expense account, don't you? Uh, I think you should take me out for lunch. And just what makes you think I'd want to have anything to do with you? Well, come on, where are your journalistic instincts? I <laughs> no. Don't you want to find out what I know? And you're going to tell me? Maybe. <sighs> be fun for you to try, though. Susie, you got that picture I sent you on the laser wire? <laughs> yeah, perhaps. But Helmut obviously thought it was important enough to send it to his editor. <laughs> look, your father's the tulip connoisseur. Have him look at it. Now, have you got anything else for us? Yeah, OK. Give it to me. Yeah, GB 75 BC, got it. Yeah, yeah, OK, good, bye. Listen to this. You wanted tulips on the Rhine? I found the big blooms. And trust me, they're not the only thing growing around here. I've got the story. I've got the pictures. And I'll be back in Los Angeles. And I want it. Yeah. There's background noise after he finished speaking. Damn it, I was right. He wasn't cut off. That's where it happened. You must have had a hell of a story. Just the last bit. They're not the only thing growing around here. I've got the story. I've got the pictures. And I'll be back in Los Angeles. Yeah, there. You hear it? The ringing sound? Mm-hmm. Play it again. A little bit more. Pictures. And I'll be back in Los Angeles. Every nautical boy has a distinctive ring sound so that pilots can navigate in the dark. Oh, by the way, that's Helmut's car rental license number. He still hasn't turned it in. Yeah, hi, JJ. Yeah, look, I need all the nautical charts for the Rotterdam Harbor. I'm looking for a boy. Yeah, one long, two short. Yeah, and I'll be with you in an hour. I was hoping we could go someplace a little more elegant. Oh, come on. This is elegant. Huh? Excuse me. Could you, uh, just bring us a couple of beers? Anything you got's okay with me. Elegant, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, if you weren't the type to terrorize women in hotel rooms, you'd be quite attractive. Well, you shouldn't judge me from our first meeting. And you took the gun away from me, just like I was a kid. Like you've done it a lot. I'm good at a lot of different things. I believe you. You know what's happened to Helmut Vogler, don't you? Lady, if I knew, why would I be checking out his hotel room? Maybe I was wrong. Maybe you are a friend of Helmut's after all. Yeah. Yeah, it's those eyes. <laughs> Line of your chin. <laughs> You're not gonna answer any of my questions, are you? What are you talking about? What? Look, I I'll tell you what. Why don't we continue this bizarre conversation back in my room, okay? So, you pay the check. And I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah, of course.
Luke is keeping an eye on Miss Sidberg. Nicky is looking for a boy. <laughs> One filled with information, I hope. Yes, a nautical boy. One that sings. It's on the rhyme. It marks a channel. And from the sounds of it, it couldn't be more than a half a mile from where Helmut made his call to Lorraine. Which was probably about six days ago, judging from the postmark on the letter he sent with the tulip. Oh, so Helmut did keep in touch with Mrs. Sidberg? Yes. And sent her flowers. Uh, Mr. Addington, there appears to be a Japonesis on this bloom. Japon oh, Japanese beetles. <laughs> Thank you, Bernard. Is. Peter, scan the original, would you? Yeah. Upper right. Move over one. There. Now magnify that. Can you see that, Peter? Ah, it looks like a perfectly ordinary little bug to me. The bug is not the issue. Pull back. That is a mature Japanese beetle. Which means that the tulip bloom must be the size of your head. How does a tulip get that big? Radiation. So, you didn't come just for me, Peter. No, that's not true, Annalisa. You are the only Lisa that I need. Hmm. I never could get a straight answer from you. Well, that's because you never asked the right question. I just like having you around, that's all. Oh, I'm here now. <laughs> that's not good enough. So how have you been keeping? You well? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. This looks like our man, Helmut Vergler. What did he do wrong? I don't think he's done anything. He's just been missing for almost a week. Can I see the body? Without the proper clearances, impossible. And I suppose they would take a very long time, huh? It's very cold down there. <laughs> we'll do it quickly. That will cost you dinner. <laughs> a late dinner. Just as soon as I'm free. Promise? Promise. With Well, no doubt about it, it was Fergal, all right. He's been dead for almost a week. 
Radiation killed him, yes? Hardly. Puncture of the heart caused by hard steel. So now we're left with a corpse and a freak flower. It's quite obvious Meyerhoff had something to do with both of them. You know, he doesn't strike me as being a murderer. However, I'm going back out to the plant. And if I get a radioactive read, I think I've got enough to force his hand. No need to worry about Luke and Nicole, I suppose. No, they're fine. appointment with Professor Meyer. No visitors allowed today. Uh, Professor, I should begin today. Professor, we have to talk. Talk about what? I already told you. I don't know your friend Vogler, and I don't have the time to discuss tulips. Not even ones that are three feet tall. So you didn't trust me all along? Sure I have. Maybe not. How long do you think you can uh, keep me prisoner here? Well, I don't see any bars. Who needs bars when they've got an armed guard? Prison's prison, huh? I like to think of it more as um, protective custody. So what does that make you? What do you want me to be? I haven't decided yet. Well, let me know. Uh. Relax. I just wanted to see what prison food's like. Okay? Uh, hello, this is room 312. Could you please send up two uh, beers? Make a champagne. Your expense account? Yeah. Excuse me, make that champagne. I know you're in over your head, now forget all this. I'm not a journalist. But I am in a position to help you. Come with me. I can't take all this any longer. You may not have to. Good thing I dropped in for a visit, Mayorov. Who knows what you would have told him. Such him. You made this easy, man. I thought I was going to have to hunt you down. JJ, 
Any word from Peter? How long since you heard from him? That's not like him. What did he find out? Radiation? I'll get back to you, but please call me if he checks in. Come on, Luke, answer. We've got a problem. Peter hasn't reported in yet. Ah, oh, Nicky, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. It's been three hours. So, where did he go? Meyerhoff's factory. It has something to do with Fergler and the radiation. We've got to get out there. Uh, okay, okay. I gotta go. Well, I'm coming with you. No, I don't think so. Hey, get this off. Who are you working for? I've told you. I write for magazines. You are the first journalist I ever met who carries a gun and a Geiger counter. Times have changed. So, since you are so interested in radiation, I can arrange a tour for you. Get as close as you like. Both lines dead. Is there any other way out of here? Most areas of the factory are contaminated because of radiation. And I think Kurtz and his men have covered all the exits. And Professor, before Kurtz comes back, you're going to have to tell me everything. You know, I still can't figure out the connection between Meyerhoff's factory and the warehouse that uh, Lorraine led us to. I mean... I had Suzanne check it out. It turns out that the warehouse is leased to a man named Kutz. Who is? The usual term is industrial spy. Uh, so Kurtz probably found out that our friend Helmut was sniffing around and then he offed him. Right. This Meyerhoff must be something to have so many people working on a Sunday. The process was foolproof until I began to stock the byproducts. Then I noticed... The abnormal size of the tulips. Then Kurtz showed up. You ready? Got your act down? Let's go charm him. Sir! Excuse me, sir? Uh, sir? Juris? <laughs> uh, we've gotten lost, Hi. you know? <laughs> We're trying to find this place. I really hate doing this to you. Good night. Butch was very persuasive, Mr. Buckley. When he found out about the side effects, he presented himself as my new partner. He was going to help me out of my difficulties. I'll keep the engine running. So tell me, if Kurtz knew about the waste, and he also knew the problem with the fuel. The samples of the fuel passed the cartel's tests with flying colors. As long as he keeps the radioactive byproducts a secret, Kurtz will collect half of the $200 million they are willing to pay. Of course, all you want is to make sure it never sees the light of day.
big payday. <laughs> Four minutes stays in the safe, and no one any the wiser. As long as Kurtz covers up his tracks. But what's he doing with the radioactive materials that he's cleaning up down there? I'm happy to report that your curiosity will be satisfied, Mr. Buckley. First hand. How does an ocean voyage sound? Oh, come on, Kurtz. You can't dump radioactive waste in the middle of the ocean. Those barrels should last a good deal longer than my lifetime, and certainly a great deal longer than yours. And to make sure that nothing goes wrong, I'm sending you two along to stand guard. whether I'm going to shoot you in the left leg or the right. to know what Mr. Kurtz was planning. What about me? Oh, don't worry, Professor. You were coerced. We'll do everything we can to help you. Uh, Annalise, listen. I've got a freighter in Rotterdam Harbor full of radioactive material. Do you think you can uh, discreetly try and clean it up for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you the name within the hour. Yeah, okay. Tonight. By the way, how did you keep Lorraine from tagging along? Lorraine. Lorraine, I am... That's him. All right, Mr. Wise Guy. Here's the way I see it. I came here to get an exclusive expose, okay? Now, you can either go to jail or... You can give me my exclusive expose. And I want everything. All the details out in the open. Everything? Mm-hmm. Some piece of work, aren't you? Well, you see, sir, it, it was like this. Come on, Luke. Sunlight time is expensive. Well, that Lorraine, she was bent on, on, on getting a story, exposing something. She certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, well, I, I figured, I figured the, the best way to protect the team would be for me to sacrifice myself. That way, I wouldn't expose the team, I'd expose myself. Ha, ha, ha! Ha, ha, ha! Ha, ha, ha! 
<laughs> no matter how deeply you try to bury the truth, it always manages to worm its way through.